We warm welcome you on our History Channel Past Perspective Hub. The Emancipation of the Haida People, 1885 A Struggle for Sovereignty and Cultural Resilience In the late 19th century, against the backdrop of colonial expansion and cultural suppression, the Haida Nation in Canada embarked on a significant journey toward emancipation. The year 1885 marked a pivotal moment for the Haida people as they negotiated with the Canadian government, seeking to assert their rights, protect their cultural heritage, and secure a measure of autonomy. Historical Context The Haida Nation, indigenous to the coastal regions of present-day British Columbia, had long thrived in harmony with their rich cultural traditions and the natural environment. However, the encroachment of European settlers and the imposition of colonial policies threatened the Haida way of life. By the late 19th century, the Haida faced challenges to their sovereignty, land rights, and cultural practices. The Impact of Colonization Colonization brought significant upheaval to the Haida people. European diseases, cultural assimilation efforts, and the encroachment of settlers disrupted traditional practices and social structures. The imposition of the reserve system further restricted their access to ancestral lands. Crisis and Response In the face of these challenges, the Haida leaders recognized the urgent need to safeguard their rights and preserve their cultural identity. The year 1885 marked the eruption of a crisis that would become a turning point, the execution of Louis Riel, a Midas leader who had sought to protect the rights of indigenous peoples. This event galvanized indigenous communities, including the Haida, to collectively address their shared struggles. Negotiations and the Haida Petition, 1885 In response to the changing political landscape, the Haida leaders, including Charles Gladstone and Skydgate Billy, seized the opportunity to negotiate with the Canadian government. Recognizing the need for a united front, they drafted the Haida Petition in 1885, a document that outlined their demands for recognition, protection of land rights, and acknowledgement of their distinct cultural identity. Key Demands of the Haida Petition Recognition of Rights The Haida Petition asserted the inherent rights of the Haida people, emphasizing their distinct cultural practices, governance systems, and the need for recognition as a self-governing nation. Protection of Lands Central to the petition was the demand for the protection of Haida lands. The leaders sought assurance that their traditional territories would be safeguarded from further encroachment. Acknowledgement of Cultural Identity Cultural autonomy was a paramount concern. The Haida leaders insisted on the right to continue their cultural practices, including the potlatch ceremony, a central component of Haida's social and spiritual life. Response from the Canadian government The Haida petition reached the highest levels of the Canadian government, garnering attention from officials including Prime Minister Sir John H. Macdonald. The government, recognizing the political and public relations implications, engaged in negotiations with the Haida leaders. Outcome and Legacy The negotiations resulted in the recognition of certain rights for the Haida people. While not fully meeting all the demands outlined in the petition, the discussions marked a significant step toward acknowledging the sovereignty and cultural resilience of the Haida Nation. The legacy of the Haida petition extends beyond 1885. It set a precedent for indigenous peoples across Canada asserting their rights and sovereignty. The Haida leaders' efforts to navigate a changing political landscape reflect not only a struggle for survival but a commitment to preserving their cultural heritage for future generations. Cultural Significance of the Potlatch The Potlatch, a ceremonial feast and gift-giving practice central to Haida culture, faced suppression under colonial policies. The Haida leaders emphasized its cultural significance and the need for its continued practice as a means of community bonding and spiritual expression. Economic Impact and Land Rights The encroachment of settlers and the establishment of reserves had severe economic repercussions for the Haida, limiting their access to vital resources. The Haida petition addressed the economic implications of land dispossession, emphasizing the need for secure land rights to sustain their traditional way of life. Collaborative Leadership The negotiation efforts were not carried out by a single leader but reflected a collaborative and united front among Haida leaders. 
Charles Gladstone and Skydgate Billy played instrumental roles, showcasing a collective determination to address the challenges faced by their people. Recognition of Haida Sovereignty The negotiations, while not fully meeting all demands, marked a recognition of Haida sovereignty within the Canadian context. This acknowledgement laid the groundwork for future discussions surrounding Indigenous self-governance and autonomy, legal precedent and subsequent developments. The Haida petition set a legal precedent for Indigenous land rights and cultural autonomy in Canada. Subsequent legal battles and negotiations have built upon the foundation laid by the Haida leaders, contributing to the evolution of Indigenous rights in the country. Challenges and Ongoing Struggles Despite the achievements of the negotiations, the Haida people continued to face challenges in the following decades, including further encroachments on their land and restrictions on cultural practices. Ongoing struggles highlight the enduring nature of the fight for indigenous rights. Legacy of Activism The Haida petition and the subsequent negotiations sparked a legacy of indigenous activism. The Haida leaders' efforts served as inspiration for future generations of indigenous activists across Canada, contributing to a broader movement for recognition, justice, and reconciliation. As we reflect on these additional details, it becomes evident that the emancipation of the Haida people in 1885 was not merely a historical event but a multifaceted struggle encompassing cultural preservation, economic resilience, collaborative leadership, legal precedent, and an enduring legacy of activism. The Haida leaders' vision and resilience have left an indelible mark on the trajectory of indigenous rights in Canada making their story a vital chapter in the broader narrative of indigenous empowerment and self-determination. In conclusion, the emancipation of the Haida people in 1885 represents a critical chapter in the ongoing narrative of indigenous resistance and resilience. The Haida petition stands as a testament to the determination of the Haida leaders to navigate the complexities of colonial policies, assert their rights, and